This Let's Play was supported by these awesome hobby companies. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Let's Play A Song of Ice and Fire. Yay, I'm getting it right. Uh, we've done a series of these before with myself and Michael Chanel from Simon, uh, where we took you through some of the basics of how to play. Now, this week we have the guys from Foreground visiting the studio, and nothing would do but Cad wanted to actually get a bit of a game on camera and have a bit of fun. Yeah, I, I've been really looking forward to this game. Uh, yeah, we, this is one you actually dropped for, didn't you? Uh, uh, just a little. A little. I, I think you mean a lot. Yeah, uh, it was... <laughs> ben and I decided we wanted two full armies for each side. Yeah. Like, by full armies, we went a bit silly. <laughs> and then... Yeah, I went, what was it, four core boxes? Well, so I got the two full armies, yeah. and then I went, oh, wait a minute. It's not enough. No. I think I've pledged enough that if I just pledged for, effectively, four pledges, yeah. which you could choose on their one, they changed it so you could choose additional pledges. Yeah. Um, that I'd have the miniatures that I wanted. So we've now got four core boxes, <laughs> four, four Tyrians, four dwarf Tyrians. Yeah. But uh, Ben's super excited about all, all of that. You know, you, you have spare minis. Uh, you guys may have something you can do with those. <laughs> yeah, well, and like all the conversions, you can do um, like, you can do Cersei, different things with Cersei, all the models you're going to have. Yeah. It'll be loads of fun. Yeah, so uh, today's scenario is one you guys may have seen before. It is the a Game of Thrones scenario. Uh, so we've set ourselves up in, like, let's call it the Riverlands, just next to a bit of a farmstead. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not sure if the buildings actually fit for this uh, sort of background or whatever, but I like the look of them, so they're there. Yeah, I mean... And they won't it, affect us because they're outside of the gaming area. It's fantasy, so... Yeah. You know, within reason, yeah, you're yeah. okay. Yeah, but for the actual gameplay itself, we are going to be sticking with the actual uh, templates that come in the box mm -hmm. for playing with, because... Uh, the game actually plays really well with its templates. I know the guys uh, from Simon have done some 3D elements that you yep. could drop in instead of these if you want to grab them. But for just playing a core box, yeah, this is grand. We've done five pieces of terrain, five objectives. Nice, simple game because this is kind of me actually teaching Cad how to play. Uh, but this is me remembering how to play from not having played it for ages because the core box just came in. So if I get rules wrong, I apologize now. Drop it in the comments below. <laughs> yes, and I'm certain there will be rules that are wrong. Uh, well, it's, I don't think it's more that rule, there'll be rules that are wrong. I think it's that we will forget to do like orders or abilities or things like that. Because that yes. always happens whenever you come to like your first games or something or coming back to something. Yeah. But anyway, the good news for me is I get the first turn. Yeah, I got to deploy first. Yeah. And I placed the first pieces of terrain. Today. Yeah, yeah, the way we did it was alternating the whole way through. Yeah. Uh, now, our objectives are actually quite interesting for this. So, as you can see on the tabletop, we have five objectives. Each one has a little card beside it. So each objective has its own little sort of bonus or ability. So I'm going to read them through. So the one next to the forest, uh, when you score points from this objective, one friendly unit may make a free maneuver or retreat action. I, I, I want that objective. That's really <laughs> useful for the Starks. They like moving a lot. Yeah, the one towards the front is, when you score points from this objective, you may restore D3 wounds to a friendly unit. Which is really nice. Except for the Berserkers. Oh, yeah. You they they, they kind of want to die. Yes. Ooh, whoops. <laughs> Don't say Killing my habitiers. Uh, the central objective is, this objective grants one additional victory point when scoring. However, uh, when you score points from this objective, the unit controlling it suffers a panic test with a minus two roll. And you've took Cersei, so that could be devastating. It could be, but the Lannisters have generally bad leadership. Yeah, but Cersei can throw on a minus two. The crown space on the tactics board gives an minus additional minus one. one. Minus two from that. Yeah, so you... Luckily, it's not near the corpse piles. Yeah, yeah, but if, I think if she's influencing me whenever I would score that, I'm not sure procedurally would she still be there or would it be cleaned up already? Yeah. So I'm, I may well, have to check that between rounds just to see if you could actually get the minus five. Until the habitat. end of the round. Ah, but you have the end of the round. So the, the way ah. the round works, you have your active phase during the round, and then you have a clean-up step. So it depends when the influence cards get removed. So there, there's something maybe for an FAQ. Uh, the other objective... Or it could be in the rule book and we haven't read that bit. Possibly. Possibly. Like I said, we're, 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 we're doing <laughs> this solo, so... Hopefully we get as much as possible right and actually just have fun, because that's yes. the point of this. All right, so the objective on your side near the... Oh, what is it? The Godswood. The Godswood is uh, when you score points from this objective, you may force one enemy combat unit to take a panic test. 
Ah. So the combination of that plus that plus well, Cersei well, could go. Yeah, depending on if she's still there during yes. that point. Because that, that could be the interesting one. Because I know if you activate the crown space with her, you can get the minus three. Yep. But you'll not be able to get the crown with that whenever oh, no. it's tested. It so the be... best you'll do is maybe a minus four. And the last one is when you claim this objective, draw one tactics card. Always nice. Uh, while you control this objective, you gain plus one tactics hand size. Very nice. Yes. Because uh, your tactics hand size is three to begin with. Now, I'm doing this on camera, to be fair. I'm going to give it a little shuffle. Oh, I'll do mine as well then. All right. Oh, you, oh <laughs> no, you wouldn't You wouldn't do that. Cad wouldn't do that. No. But, but no. <laughs> right. I actually normally prefer laying cards out and then... Oh, you do the old Yu-Gi-Oh shuffle. So, yeah. yeah, sure, let's very quickly Oopsie. do that. I've got, mine's gone wrong already. <laughs> so today I am playing with the Great John as my army commander, just because I like the aggression of how he plays. That will affect your tactics deck. Basically, you'll be trading out like six cards, depending on who your commander is. Something nice, Cad. Sneaky, sneaky stuff. Yeah, I got excited by my cards. Uh, they're not quite as exciting as the first thought when I read them and read it wrong, but they're pretty exciting. So I've got um, Jamie Lannister uh, mm -hmm. leading some Lannister uh, guardsmen uh, because his cards tend to boost defense and their abilities are they, the only real ability for them that's a benefit is the three up armor save. Yeah. They do have Lannister Supremacy, which is when they pass a um, panic test, not leadership test, that's old Warhammer in my head. Uh, yeah. Uh, panic test that um, you have to then take a test at minus two. Yeah. Uh, I've got um, Gregor Clegane, the mountain. Yeah. Uh, as a leading unit attachment. As a unit attachment, leading the mountain's men. Mm hmm. Um, that makes them a really horrible unit. It's extra attack dice. Yeah. He, they've got, he gives them Sunder, which is minus one armor. Uh-huh. Um, they themselves have critical blows, which cause two hits on sixes. Mm -hmm. And Vicious, which is minus two to panic tests for units that they are fighting. I see. Um, I've then got a normal unit of guardsmen with a guard captain. Now, what he allows them to do is when they would fail a panic test, you lose as many models as you fail the panic test by. Yes. Um, but well, they run away. They, they run off. Well, no, the exact wording is you suffer wounds. Yes. Which is important for my cavalry. Yeah. Because it was just it, by the number you feel a model runs away, I'd be losing like three wound units, which is nuts. Yes. And uh, it, it would uh, end the game relatively quickly for your cavalry. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, like wounds that sort of more represent rather than actual taking wounds, it's the, the courage and the status of the unit. Yeah. Because you can use some of the uh, non combat unit things to recover wounds and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah, no, uh, one thing I forgot to do, we had some extra terrain at the front here. I'm quickly going to just move it to the back here, yes. by the way. I have a handy dandy little table at the back here, just uh, for that uh, very purpose. And the final unit I have is the um, the, the Lannister Halberdiers. Yes. I was making sure I got the name right. Yes. Um, and they've got an assault veteran with them, who's this guy here. Yeah. And what they're really nice with is they have Sunder anyway. Mm hmm they don't actually lose any attack dice until they're in their final rank, which really? is pretty good. Yeah, they're That's seven for the full three, seven for two ranks, and then yeah. three for the third rank. See, that kind of makes sense, because the, the Halberdiers, the second rank is probably reaching through and just putting the pointy bits in. Yeah, and it, is, it makes them quite good. Um, they, they can hold up to a lot more. Uh, the, they get order set for charge, yep. uh, an order you can only use once per turn, uh -huh. um, which allows them to, when they get charged, they can fight a round of combat before your opponent does. Now, do you have to use that order during their active turn, or does it say it triggers whenever they're charged? Uh, if it is unengaged and charged from the front, there we go. So, we had a little demo game to try and help ourselves, yeah. and I did that completely wrong in the demo game, because, um, is it Grey Wind? Uh, yes. Had already engaged them. Yes. So they wouldn't have been able to do it against Stark's, un uh, Rob Stark's see. unit. I see. So it's, it, this is what we're saying about we might get things wrong. Yeah. I did. <laughs> well, <laughs> then I won the game, so perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, uh, for my own forces, uh, like I said, I've got the Great John leading uh, my forces. He actually has a, a very nice order, which means I can make uh, defenders become panicked and vulnerable. So there's like three status effects in the game. So uh, panic basically means that I can make my opponent re-roll their sort of panic tests, which is really nice. Uh, vulnerable means I can make them re-roll their defense die, which is really great, great against these guys with their three up save. And there's also weakened, which uh, we may see later on, which means you can make your opponent re-roll their attack dice. Mm -hmm. 
So it's very, very simple. I've taken Caitlin Stark. Now, we are playing 31 points apiece here because we both just want the, a little bit extra. I know the guys recommend you, you stay on the rounded points, but it's your own game. You can do as you please with it. Uh, she has a fantastic ability, which is Family Duty Honor, which is the, the yep. house words. Uh, influence. Uh, when this unit claims a tactic zone, attach this card to a combat unit until the end of the round. When Caitlin influences a unit, remove one condition token, so that's either the, the panicked, weakened, or vulnerable. Uh, while influencing a unit, that unit always attacks using its highest attack die value, regardless of remaining ranks. This is important, because it just means you will t take your highest stat. So for the Berserkers, their highest stat is actually on their final rank, which is 10 dice. You attach her to them, they get that stat, because it's their highest attack stat. Yes. Which is really, really nice. Uh, I've then, of course, taken Rob Stark as a unit attachment. He's adding an extra plus one speed to the unit. He also gives them rapid assault, so whenever they're targeted by the uh, the horse symbol here, the movement symbol, that actually means you get a maneuver. He lets them charge on that, which is really good. Yes. Uh, then I've got my two units of Sworn Swords. Uh, Rob's in with one of them. Uh, I've got the Stark Outriders, which are absolutely fantastic because they get extra movement. And the way I've actually deployed my forces, I've been sneaky. I've put Greywind and the Outriders together because they both get free movement. So I can be really, really clever. I might be able to get Greywind up, tie somebody up, and then use the Outriders getting extra movement to swing further out and around. Yeah. So lock you down and then go after you. And that's one of the things that's interesting about the starter set is I think... I think after only playing one game, yeah, the <laughs> the, the Bannisters want to be more like they're they're a heavy infantry army basically. Yeah, they want to so, be blocked up like yeah. Romans. Uh, whereas you guys want to be getting around the sides, getting around the flanks, and you've got Rob that will allow you to do that a little bit with the abilities and his extra speed. Yeah, yeah. And you've got your cavalry and um, Grey Wind that will allow you to do that. Yeah, through their abilities. And then I'm a little bit worried. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, let's kick into round one then. Yeah. Mm. Where do I want to start is the question here. Uh, you can leave the field, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> no. no, no. <laughs> so I'm going to start with the, the Great John and his unit of Berserkers. They are not being subtle. They are being given the march order to double their movement. Uh, so their base movement is 6, so that means they get to move 12. So super, super quick. They're going whee, right up the field. Uh, important thing to note. Uh, whenever you are marching, you don't get a pivot at the start of your move, you only get it at the end. So they're going to rotate like so, so that they can maybe walk onto that objective next round. Uh, and the objective is here. Uh, important thing to note as well is uh, objectives do not start scoring until the end of round two. The game is six rounds long, and the victor is whoever hits eight first, or at the end of six rounds, whoever has the most. Yeah, and I imagine that's mainly to stop the... Uh... If you had a, a complete army of cavalry, you wouldn't score straight away first turn. Yeah, it would be nuts. So, activation counter, done on these guys. So, I'm going to activate my halberdiers here. Mm -hmm. uh, they're going to also do a... Actually, I'm not going to activate my halberdiers. No? I'm going to use Cersei, straight up. Okay. So, I'm activating her. So, Rob's unit has no confidence. Uh, okay. Um, and then... So, while she is influencing them... Uh, they suffer minus two to the morale tests. Okay. And then I'm going to use the crown to make Rob's unit pa make a panic test and suffer an additional minus one to their leadership. Uh, okay, so they're minus three on their leadership. Yep. So their leadership generally is a six plus uh, on two dice. It's yep. now nine plus. Yes. I need to mitigate that a little bit. So I'm going to play Darwolf's Fever, or Fervor. Ah. Uh. So, uh, when a friendly unit suffers a panic test, that unit gains plus one to their panic uh, test roll, and then an additional pl plus one for each destroyed rank. So it is just a plus one, but it's dragging it back a little bit. And it's taking it in more, because, like I said, we, we have played one. The yeah. Starks seem to want to actually take some casualties. Yeah, well, they're, they're, they, they're okay taking casualties. I yeah. mean, like, doing this to me now is a little bit of a pain, because my active abilities actually make me take casualties. So yes. I want to have the, the bodies there to actually take the damage. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing on this card is, if I controlled the, uh, the cross swords, one enemy engaged with that unit would also suffer D3 wounds. Ooh. It's a nice little knockback, isn't it? Yeah. But I'm using it for this, just to give me a nice little plus one. So I will get myself a pair of dice. 
Roll them together and I'm looking at eight. Yes. For eight. Ooh, eight. Bosh. They're fine. Oh, well, so, so you, you tried hard. So otherwise that would have meant I lost a guy. Yes. So I used that perfectly. Fantastic. Your activation. Uh, my activation. Excellent. So not really worried about them. I think, yeah, I'm going to go with my, uh, my sworn swords here. And they're just going to go for a double move. So their move is a base of five, so they go ten. So pop that there. Ugh. Careful not to shift people. And they stop there. And they'll rotate like so. Which is nice. I'll also straighten up this. And they've made it to here again, getting into range of that objective. Now I'm going to do the same, but with my halberdiers. Uh-huh. So they're going to move 10. We're being very speedy, rushing into the fray. Yeah. Oh wait, no, that house isn't here yet. <laughs> and then then not going to pivot. Okay. It is something I wonder about for the, the future of this game. There are so many houses that the guys at Simon can visit. Yeah, and they've already visited uh, minor houses with the Kickstarter. Mm. Um, as well as major houses. Yeah, they've also got some mercenary forces in there. Yeah, they've they? got Boltons. Uh, you've got Umbers and Tullys coming for start. Yeah. I think the Lannisters are just Lannisters yeah. at the moment. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm waiting on House Mormont. That's, yeah. That, that's my <laughs> heartland right there. Actually, Mormont's, Maggie Mormont is part of the Kickstarter as well. Nice. So you ha can have a Mormont leader. Ooh. See, this, this is something I really like, is your leaders really do change up the, the way your armor plays. Mm -hmm. So even though you've, you've got quite a self-contained box here, you've got a couple of interesting ways to play and interesting things you can do with your units. Because if I dropped, say, Rob Stark, I could get all of my extra unit attachments in there because they're really cheap, they're like one point a piece. Yes. But having the character one in there is just a no-brainer for me at the minute. And Game of Thrones is all about the characters. Of course. Well, A Song of Ice and Fire is all about the characters. Yeah. well... <laughs> playing a Game of Thrones. <laughs> yes. The scenario. Yeah, that's all right then. <laughs> okay, uh, the... So I've moved two, you've moved one. I've done... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh. <laughs> so there's not really going to be any attacking, so there's no reason really to do Caitlyn just yet. So I'm going to save her for now. I'll go with Rob's unit. Mm -hmm. And they're just going to go for a standard move. And the reason for that is because of the way I've moved these, uh, he doesn't really have space to move. So uh, I'll just go for a, a regular uh, maneuver. So he'll rotate a little to start. And he gives them plus one to their move. So they're actually six inch move, which is fast, so nice. Fast little guts. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> okay, no. That is uh, that... Cersei caused them to uh, be a bit scared. <laughs> well, this is actually a prime example of one of the, the design changes the guys at Simon made for these particular trays. So you see the way I was trying to pick them up from the front? That is not the way you should do it. They've actually put two little notches in the sides here to actually let you lift them a lot easier. So I'll put them to there, and they will just hang back a little bit. Because I think, if I'm lucky, I can be sneaky next round. Right. And Cersei will come with them. Uh, I am going to activate these Lannister Guardsmen. They're going to march. Now, Lannister Guardsmen only have a move of four. Yeah, they're so pretty slow. Eight is the distance they're going to be going. So this is that, that heavy armor kicking in. They're just moving to there. Yeah. And they're not going to pivot. Okay. Okay. Uh, so for myself, hmm. <laughs> all right, uh, I'm going to activate Caitlin, mm -hmm. and I'm going to put her, ooh, 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 ooh. I don't need to restore wounds, so I'm actually going to go for the, the free movement there, mm -hmm. and yeah, we'll go with that. So it's going to go on Grey Wind. Yep. Ooh. Uh, I'm not going to put her card down now because nobody's attacking. So Grey Wind's getting a free maneuver, uh, yeah, free maneuver of six inches, which is lovely, lovely. Yes. So Grey Wind going to go up the field to here. Um, and I will activate now the mountain. Okay. His men, the mountain's men, move um, five, so they're going to double to ten. Yeah. So. Really rocking up the field now. Yep. 
Right, uh, Where we're both combat armies, I think that's just going to be... Yeah, oh, so this is, is going to be a huge clash in the middle. Yeah. The question is, how far do we go with it? Because, I mean, like me, I have a bit of a problem because there's the stakes there that are going to yep. do D3 plus one wounds to it's me. It's like I placed happen. them on your side of the table. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you kind of think that, wouldn't you? <laughs> Um, okay, so my next activation... Like this little fear bubble you put here. <laughs> well, you know what... <laughs> what comes around your, goes your around. Your morale's kind of bad, I figured, why not? Uh, I will probably have to check the keywords on some of the terrain, because the terrain all works off of keywords with like a, a little list at the back of the book, which I thankfully have there, but I'm, I'm sure I can figure out whenever I need to. All right, I'm going to go with the Outriders. Uh, so from where they are here, uh, yeah, they're going to take the free manoeuvre for six inches which makes them really good. So I'll pick up the tray, like so, and pop it to there. And now they're on to their, their one action. So they're going to go for a manoeuvre, because I don't want to get too far ahead of myself. Mm -hmm. And for their manoeuvre, they're just going to come four inches forward and do a little rotation. So they're mm -hmm. hanging back just a little bit. This is a mistake that a lot of people make with their Outriders. Because they're so quick, they overextend them. They just run them out with zero support. Yeah. And it makes a lot of sense. You don't want your cavalry to be out by themselves. Exactly. I'm going to activate Jamie now. Yeah. And you can pre-measure in this game, so I'm about yep. to. So I am going to do a double move with him. Uh huh. I'm going to move him to there. All right, stopping just short of the corpse pile. I believe that the corpse pile would slow me down by an inch. Uh, so do you want to double check that? Yes. Because otherwise I probably will. If it doesn't, yeah. I will well, carry for on. For this game, look at how thin your rulebook is to actually figure everything out. So, ah, and this is what I love. I love when companies do this. Mm -hmm. See right on the back page? Cheat sheet, no flicking through the book. Yeah. So, uh, no, I actually do need to <laughs> open the book up to here. To it's just only get... the page before. Yeah. Uh, so, for the corpse pile, they're hindering, horrific, and rough, okay? So, for uh, it's on the... hindering, oh, no, no, it's oh, right, it's there, on, right, it's right oh, on the other side of the page, which is great. So, uh, units must roll two dice when charging through this terrain. Select the lowest result when charging. Uh, units suffer a disorderly charge on a roll of a one or a two if they cross this terrain piece. So it's risky. Uh, horrific. While within short range of this terrain piece, you suffer a minus one to your morale. Not brilliant for me. Yep. And uh, the last one is rough. Units subtract one from any movement. I thought it was. So, yeah. I'd now, move the, the interesting thing is the godswood. All that is is inspiring. You can run clean through it. Yes. Uh, so I'm not going to move because if I moved eight, I'd touch it, which means I'd lose an inch of movement. Yeah. So he's just going to move there. Okay, cool. Uh, so it's back to me. I still have Greywind. Yeah. And Greywind gets a free move before he starts moving, which is fantastic. Uh, so where do I want him to go? So if I go there, can I borrow your measuring stick? Yeah, of course you can. So if I go to 6 and then go to 12, I'm still out of range of you, which yes. kind of sucks. But so you I wouldn't think... be outside of my charge range of you. Exactly. So this is why you might want to slow down a little bit. So uh, Greywind is just going to move up 4, hang back just a smidge, and will do an inaction for his proper action of the round, because that is an option. Yeah. And it's... What Justin's probably thinking of is the fact that he no you alternate who goes first. Yes. So if he had moved him there, I would activate first. Yeah, and you could just get a free slap at it. Yeah. Whereas he knows I'm going to have to move something yeah. before Justin does anything else. Exactly. Uh, right. Well, I think that's the end of round one. Everything it is. Activated. All right. Uh, we will take a quick moment to tidy up here, and we will be right back. Okay, everybody. We are back for round two, Cad. First player token is yours. Thank you. Um, which is good for me because now he has to move something first. Yeah, I've got to make a decision, mm -hmm. which is the bit I'm not overly keen on. Yeah. I like making decisions normally. <laughs> <laughs> um, Who's it going to be? Who's it going to be? I think, to be honest, it's, I'm, I'm going to do the same thing again. It's a bit repetitive. That Your queen commands Rob Stark to have a bad day. <laughs> So, yeah, Cersei is going to make Rob uh, a bit scared, potentially, yep. again. So he's going to be taking N leadership on nine. nine. Whew. Oh. Hey! He's too brave for his own good. <laughs> this wolf. is going to get him killed one day. The young wolf. <laughs> um, okay. Your activation. Yeah. So there was a reason I did that. 
Mm -hmm. It was to hopefully make you activate something. Yeah. You don't want to move the uh, the the berserkers closer to me. Actually, it's it's going to be Rob's unit to start. Yeah. Uh, because I'm actually this round possibly going to do a horrible chain effect. Lovely. <laughs> yeah. This 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 could be vicious just for for what I've noticed that I can do here. So Rob's unit's going to activate. They're just going to move regularly. Yep. Oh, if I don't throw stuff about, that would be amazing, Justin. <laughs> uh, so from from where they are here, they can move six. And they are going to move six to here with a little rotate, mm -hmm. which could be good. So it's back to you, sir. And I will remember to put my activation token down because that's and Cersei that's does follow them. She does. She does. Well, the the, the harshly worded letter she <laughs> says follows them. I think she keeps sending them. Nobody listens. You know th those love notes, man. Rob's <laughs> got to be so uncomfortable right now. Uh, right. I'm gonna have a couple of pre measures. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they're gonna be just off that objective this Ooh. turn. Oh, this Fuck is where me. this is where deployment of my units. If I'd swapped them around, yeah, you could have got there. Yeah, this, this is something I'm wondering. Whenever you get your your big pledge, are you guys gonna build like pure armies of halberdiers? Yeah, well, I actually really like the halberdiers. Mm. Um, they're slightly more expensive than the guardsmen. Yeah, but that I extra love movement. Oh, it's also the brace. Yeah. So the fact that they, if they get charged, they can fight a round of combat before your opponent does. Yeah, the, the, the thing I find myself wanting more of in this force is actually Berserkers and Outriders. Yep. I would love to do a force of just Berserkers and Outriders. I don't think I'd like to fight yet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I want to keep them on this at the end. Uh-huh. So, just going to do a single... I might actually do a bit of a... Double move, so mm -hmm. they're still clipping it. Yeah. And still within short of the Godswood. Yeah. So what do you get on the, the card there? Just remind me. Uh, I get to make one of your units to have a panic test. Whenever you score on it. Whenever I score on it. So we're going to have to check yes. the, the timing of Cersei. Yes. Okay. Uh, well, that's very simple. It's pretty near the start of the book whenever it's actually going through the phases of the turn. Yeah, I'm sure we'll be able to do that quickly at the end for... Yeah. And, and then we'll, either I'll be happy or I'll be sad. Yeah, or some of Rob's guys might run away. <laughs> yeah. It's been a reasonably bloodless fight so far. That's because Rob's men keep going, shut up, Cersei. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, uh, I'm actually going to activate the Berserkers next. Mm -hmm. They're going to go for a, a regular maneuver. Yep. So for them, where they are, I'll move this out of the way, just so I'll be fit to read it in a moment. They have a move of six, so they can, oh yeah, they can get up to here and rotate and just sit. Hello, mountain. How are you? <laughs> are you having a lovely day? Uh, so the good thing is, when you score points from this objective, you may restore up to D3 wins to a friendly unit. To a friendly unit. Yes, yeah, so not necessarily them. The, this friendly yeah, unit. Yeah, so that's really useful for me. That is. Um, is okay. the mountain going to charge? Well, he's got five plus a D6. So he'd need to roll a four or more for the charge to go mm -hmm. off. I know you're going first next turn. Yep. So, I'm going to be a bit of a coward and not do that first. All right. <laughs> I'm going to move these guys. So they're moving a double. <laughs> okay. So coming just short of that objective, eh? Yeah. Right. Right. Hmm. Okay. It's time. So, uh, the unit here is going to activate. Yep. They're going to go for a maneuver, and they're just going to move up onto this yep. objective, touching it, all right? Staying behind the woods. Yes. Now, its ability is great. When you score points from this objective, one friendly unit may make a free maneuver action or retreat action. Ooh. So, yeah. So I am hoping that the Mountain's men do charge in this turn, because then I can retreat. I go first and get the charge back at them. Yes. Ta-da. Ah. You see? Yep. Yeah, what I'm worried about with the mountains oh, also, men... Also, I need to mark units that have activated. So the berserkers have gone, and so have they. What I'm worried about with the mountains men is if you fail to make the charge, yeah. you have to do a panic test. Uh, yes. 
So, and their, their morale is only seven plus. Yeah. So it could go bad for me if it goes wrong. Um, plus, I actually want to hold the objective because mm -hmm. I increased my tactics hand size. So I am going to activate the mountains men. Okay. They're going to move. So, right, they can move up to five. I'll put it uh -huh. over there. So they're going to move to there. Mm-hmm. Right, now I need to do a little pre-measuring. Yeah. And I also need to check a thing. So, for the Outriders... Uh, da, 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 da. Uh -huh. So, actually, have yeah. It says I get a free move action. Cavalry, each model in this unit has three wounds. At the start of its activation, it may make a free maneuver action. Right. So that's not a trigger. That is just something it has, mm -hmm. which is important for what I'm about to do. I'm going to activate, uh, probably going to activate the cavalry here. Yep. But I need to pre measure. Mm -hmm. So. Do you need both again? Uh, yes, I will need both. So, what I can do is I can. Are you that. trying to get that in? Uh, kind of, yeah. But the way I'm actually going to do it is really, really sneaky. So, I'm going to activate them. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to play Swift Advance. What this does. When a friendly unit activates, ah, no, it's infantry. <laughs> so I can't use it on them. That's unfortunate, but I think I can still make it. So, uh, with my, my free move, they'll rotate. They will go forward. They're six. And then they're going to try and charge the mountains men. Okay. So I need four plus. Yep. Because of their speed six. Now, do they have anything? Rapid Assault, uh, da, 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 da. no, that's fine. Uh, that's fine. Okay, so it's just a D6, looking mm -hmm. for a 4+. plus. Come on, come on. Let me get a flank attack straight off the bat. <laughs> be hilarious. <laughs> yes! Oh, well. He's in there! So it's 6 plus 5 is 11. Mm -hmm. More than enough to get me in. And majority of the unit is in your flank. Yep. Bonk. Now I am exposing my flank to another unit here, but I'm accepting that because this should hurt. It okay. should. So cavalry, eight dice. Looking at force to hit. Yeah. And do I have any other cards that could be played here? Yeah. I have a card to play. Yeah. So uh, devastating impact when a unit charges. That unit may re-roll their charge distance die, and their attack uh, deals two additional. You had to play that before you charge. Ah, can you give it to me? Yeah. Thank you. Uh, so two additional automatic hits. If I control the, the movement space, uh, the unit automatically counts as having rolled six for their charge distance. Oh, I could have saved that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and they deal two automatic wounds instead of hits. Ooh, that would have been but nasty. But that's only if you control that. But you've got two hits already. Yep. And they're going to go after you. And they've actually. I was checking the keyword on my card. <laughs> All right. <laughs> after going to you, that's not the right keyword. I can't play it. I don't play it yet. I play it after okay, you so roll. I'm looking at fours. So there's two. Plus and the additional two. Oh, and you yep. charged. So I get to reroll. So there's another one. So that's five hits total. And you are minus one to your save. Now, I am going to play uh -huh. Expert Parry from Jamie Lannister. Okay. Um, every six I roll blocks two hits. Okay. Uh, if it was Jamie Lannister's unit that played it, uh, every six I rolled, uh, five or six I rolled would block two hits. I see. Roll up. Oh, so that is, a, well, that is five blocked. They've only uh, got well, a four up armor. So, okay. Sorry. They've got a four up armor. Goes to minus five. one to a five. Sixes block two. Mm-hmm. Five blocks one, all five are blocked. Yep, that's fine. And I do not need to take a test. Yep. Because uh, I would have to take a panic test if I lost a single model. Yes. No, if I took a single wound, I believe. Yes. Because that's yes. important for if, the cavalry. If you take the wound, you take the test. Yeah. But that's okay. Yeah. That I accept it. And then, unsurprisingly, You're gonna Jamie is going to come in Jamie the side. and hit me on the side, yeah. So he is going to be in automatically. Yep. 
but I do need to roll the dice. Yes. Because I'm going through dangerous terrain. Yeah. Well, you roll two. Picking the lowest. Yeah. So it's hazardous and rough. You'll lose an inch. Yeah. Pick the lowest for a Luckily, three. Luckily, if I'd rolled either of them as a one or a two, mm -hmm. then I'd have also had a disordered charge. Yes. Which means you don't get your bonuses. Yes. So. But you're in, I assume? Yeah. Yeah, I was, I was effectively four inches away. So as long as I rolled a one, yep. I was in. Even with the minus one distance. Yes. Now, Lannister guards only get six attack dice. Uh-huh. But this should be painful. Yeah. Hitting on fours, re-rolling misses. Oh, I'm glad I'm re-rolling misses. So that's two hits. Two hits. Two more hits. So okay. four hits total. Four hits total. Uh, any special abilities reducing nope. my armor? So my armor is on a four plus. So, minus one, because I charge you in the flank. Yes. Uh, so, we're looking at fives. Yep. Oh, look at that. Two That's not two what wounds. I wanted. Lovely thing is, uh, my cavalry have three wounds apiece, so I don't lose any men. On the plus side, I did cause wounds to you. Yes. So, so you I do take... have to take the test. So, it's at minus two. Minus two, yep. Corpse pile Corpse pal and, and flank. flank. So, they're usually a six, they're now on an eight. And you've passed so many of these, I'm hoping for a loss. The dice gods have to turn against you at some point. Yeah. yeah. Oh, actually, that's horrible. Uh, that is Ooh. five wounds. Yeah. That's two of them are dead. Yeah. Because of the two wounds I've already caused. Yeah, back rank is, is gone, so... Come on, Jamie. Bong bong, dead. Yeah. However, the good thing is, they have their order. Yep. And I'm going to use their order, so I'll take the token away. Uh, after this unit is attacked with melee, this unit may make a free retreat action. Yep. So it's d6 plus their movement to the side or back. So, uh, ba, 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 what do I get? Three inches onto plus there. Is that six, nine, inches? nine inches. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. And you can pivot at the end of it, I believe. Yes. No, uh, I'm going to have them shimmy to the side. Mm -hmm. Nine inches. Yeah, I thought you might go that way rather than off the table. If you, if you think the end of our board is like right here where our tokens yeah. are. So actually, how far back could I get doing that? Uh, You'd I be get... off the table. Yeah, so edge of the table is there. I could go eight inches back. Oh, that's, I did. So you I'll can do. fall back even if you can't make the full distance. Is it up to? Uh, yeah, I believe so. Okay, cool. Uh, I will double check that. So, I'll go to there, and I'll rotate. You I believe I can get a free rotate, so yep. I'm going to do that. Yep. Now, they have activated, so I need to mark that. Now, I have actually activated everything. Yeah, which leaves me with uh, Greywind and, and Caitlin. Caitlin. Now, the downside of playing the Lannisters in the way I've got them is I've... And, I guess, in the box, yep. is you've only got four units to, if you've got Rob Stark's, five units. Yeah. Oh, I forgot. Another card I need to play. Okay. Uh, we haven't moved any further on, so I think we're okay, but it's yeah. called Lash Out. Yeah. So, after a friendly unit is attacked with melee... Yeah. Uh, if this unit has one destroyed rank, it deals the attacker D3 wounds. Oh, D3... Oh, I can't stop that. If it has two destroyed ranks, uh, deal D3 wounds plus two. Yeah. If it's House Umber, you automatically roll three. Ooh! I'm yeah. glad you didn't... That could have been horrible if I would charged those yeah. Berserkers. So, it's D3 wounds to yeah. the damage unit. With, uh, I don't believe saves. So no. two guys die. Uh, I ah, guess. Left to right? Yes, sorry. Or right to left, sorry. Right to left. Yeah. Um, then... Okay. Yeah, uh, like, if it's wounds, it, yeah. they aren't hit, so therefore you don't get a save. Yeah. Sure. What do I need to do now? Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. So what were we checking? Ah, the yes. Distance, distance on a retreat. So we'll quickly check this because the, the book is so small, it's really easy to find stuff. Yeah, so during the, the cleanup phase, uh, so you resolve any yeah. effects that trigger at the end of the round, score victory points, check to see if victory conditions are met, remove all activation tokens, then remove models from the tactics board, which means Cersei does take effect yes. while you score. Yes, which is great for me. Yeah, so I have two activations left. I've got Greywind yeah. and I've got Caitlyn. Uh, I'm going to activate Caitlyn. Yep. And I'm going to put her on this, the movement space, yeah? Yes, I am then going to play... The NCU use, loses all of its abilities, which I don't think is going to affect the unit that you're about to activate, but it might. Okay. But I also, because I'm on the crown, force you to discard your tactic card. This, this card? Yeah. The swift advance card? Yeah. <laughs> That's fair <laughs> enough. 
Uh, no. Uh, it, it's discard one tactic card. If you had two, I'm assuming you could yeah. discard whichever one you like. Yes. Uh, however, what that's going to do is I'm going to use it on Rob's unit. Yep. Which is probably what you thought. Yes. Because he gets to use that as a free charge action. Uh, yes. <laughs> and I, I assume I thought that was what was coming. Yep. Uh, actually, let me double check. The target... If targeted by the movement space on the tactics board, this unit may make a free charge action instead of maneuver slash retreat yes. action. Fantastic. So I get to roll. Uh, unfortunately, that card would have been so good there. Yes. I, I imagine. would have automatically rolled the six. Ah. Ta-da. I see. Yeah. So now I have to roll for it. How far away am I? So it's my movement plus D6. So they're at movement six. Ah, you're going straight into them, not the halberdiers. No. So for there... Mine, uh, don't forget, you've got to run through nine, this. Three, yeah, I need to check what that is. If it removes anything. So for the spikes. That's why I thought you were going to go for the halberdiers. Yeah. Dangerous, destructible, hindering. So hindering is I have to roll two dice while charging through it and take yeah. the lowest. Uh, it doesn't slow me down, though. But I think if you get a one or two on either of the dice, you do a disordered charge on hindering. Uh, Double check. Yeah. Right. Yep, it does. So... But that's okay. That's that okay. would have been great for you if you had the swift advance, because they'd have both been sixes, exactly. I guess. Well, you just count as automatically having rolled a six. Yeah. But I would assume with that you'd then have to roll the additional dice. I don't know. It's, it's a very weird one. Okay, <laughs> another one for the FAQ. But anyway, I have to roll two dice. Yeah. Uh, I'm nine inches away, so I'm looking at threes. Yes. So the odds are pretty good. Yeah, you Bosh, got a four. In. I am very happy with that. So... These guys will go straight in. I'll just remove this. Mm -hmm. We know it's going to take effect. So I go straight in. Just as a point of warning that? before you finish, uh -huh. you know you're stood on the objective that causes you to take a test at minus two. Yep. You also have Cersei. I'm accepting it. Right, that's fine. I didn't want you to be like, no. Nope. What's happened to me? I'm, I'm accepting it because I want to steal that objective from you early. Yes. Well, that's that's... So the way that I did win in the last game was having the three objectives for the first turn. Yeah. That's the only reason, really. Yeah, so well, I think it, that's important. Yeah, well, for it, it it's just that, that little edge. You're then trying to force your opponent And that's off two it. points. Yes. So it is worth it. Yeah, so that's four points total. I'll have yes. halfway to victory already. So I, I know I'll probably lose some guys there unless I roll like a god. <laughs> but we, we, we all know. If <laughs> someone asks already... you if you can roll like a god, you say yes. Rob's already done that twice. Yes. Uh, right, so they're in on the charge. Yep. They are going to use Stark Fury. Yeah, I thought they would. So basically, four Stark uh, Fury. They take D3 damage first of all for going through the spikes. Yes, thank you for reminding me. Just it reminded me because Stark Fury is also D3 damage. So I'll lose two guys, which is fine. So it's from this side. Uh, right, so before rolling dice, this attack may gain uh, plus one to hit and critical blow. Rolls of a six deal two hits. If it does, after the attack has been completed, unless this unit has only one rank remaining, it deals, it suffers D3 wounds, mm -hmm. which is fine by me. Okay. So, their attack stat is eight. Eight? Yep. Oh, because the blow bonus from Stark Fury? Uh, no, it's eight dice to start. Then wow. Then it goes to six, then it goes to five, but I'm hitting on threes. I feel sad for my Lannister men, who only get six attack dice. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, the... the the Starks are quite light, quite fighty. Well, your armor's only four plus, whereas mine's three, so... Yeah, but my, my resolve is six, where yours is seven. Yes. So, let's see what we get. Looking at threes, six mm -hmm. is due two. And I get to reroll. So there's one, two, three, four to start. Yeah. Five to start. That was a one, but... Yeah. And then I reroll these. Uh, for that's eight. Eight, at eight land. Um, my word, that's going to hurt. I'm debating whether to use one of my cards or not. <laughs> okay. uh, expert parry again, so six is now block two, yep. and my armor is three plus. And you've got eight saves to make. Yeah, I'm like, the, just the off chance that I fail loads of them. Yeah. So, no, you don't. You feel one. Uh, which is blocked by the sixes. Yeah. Well played. Yeah, that was a concerning moment. Yeah, that, that was a big swing from me. Although it took out my tactics card, which yeah. I was keeping for Jamie. Yeah, no. D3. Oh, yeah. To the Starks. For one guy. Yeah. This is absolutely fine. So, we score victory points now. 
Uh, yeah, so I'll... I'm I'll sorry, I don't know if you've got any more activations or cards. Oh, well, I still have Grey Wind. You've still got Grey Wind, so I'm so, not going to make you uh, yeah. skip so, ahead. <laughs> okay, so Grey Wind gets his free move at the start. Yeah. And this is kind of why I retreat it. Because I'll go six. Rotate ever so slightly so that you are seen. Yeah. But in my... in the flank. Yeah. And then he's going to try to charge. Okay, well, I can't stop that, so... Yeah. So, how far away are we? Uh, his move is six, you're eight away, so I need two. Yeah. So let's go for the one, shall we? <laughs> <laughs> so, off we go. That is not the one. <laughs> the wolf is hungry. <laughs> <laughs> so, from where he goes, he's straight into you. Yeah. And on the side, like so. Now, he only gets two attacks. But, but they hit really well, don't so they? They're like yeah. two plus hits, the hit. Hits on twos. Yeah, and you'll be at the minus one, minus one again if I get lucky, and you're out of tactics cards. Yep. So for two, oh, one only hit, one, one hit. Miss, I'm on the charge. Oh yeah. So you get two attacks. Two hits. Yep. Um, saving on fours, going up to fives. So one, one failed. But and unfortunately, now you're gonna test. I'm going to test. Uh, wrong. The yeah, right side. Yeah, you got it. And I think, yeah, I'm within short of that, so I get minus one. So I'm actually on eight. Uh, minus two total then. A oh, minus two total, nine. Yeah, because you've. Yeah, I'm on thanks. the side, and you've got the the thing. Uh, so at least four of them. Ouch! That is not what I wanted. Hooray! <laughs> the little wolf caused all that problem. Yeah, but that... you, you see the way I, I sort of chained the effect there. Yeah, so I got the cavalry in. I knew yeah. you were going to charge me, so I knew I wouldn't die. I could get out and leave room for Grey to charge in. Yes. That was a bit horrible, um, and it yeah. could have been. It could have been even worse if the cavalry, if I hadn't had the tactics card to block the cavalry's attacks. Yeah, oh, it's about to get worse. It's about to get worse. It is because of the way I've I've lined myself up here. I'm going to get charged in the front by the berserkers. Uh, well, you're going to get the, that charge, but something else is going to happen ah. too, which is going to be even worse for you. So, we collect victory points first. Yeah. The other thing is, you can't charge me because you're engaged by the. Wall. No, I can't. Yeah. So. Uh, do it in oh order. yeah, let's do it in the proper order. So, we're doing the cleanup phase, so we resolve any effects at the end of the round. Right, that'll be what happens with each of the, yeah. the zones, right? So, uh, when I score this objective, I may restore D3 wounds to a unit. Yep. So I will grab my victory point for Two that. Vi uh, yeah, one victory point for that. One for that. And I will heal D3 wounds. Yeah. Uh, now, I'm going to say you probably need to pick your unit beforehand. So I am actually going to pick my cavalry. Yeah, because we're restoring one wound actually returns a whole cavalryman. Exactly. And your rank. Exactly. So for the cavalryman, I get two, two back. So there's a guy back with a wound on him. So he'll go to here and pop the wound down there. Next one that scores for me is, uh, is that one or that one? Uh, let's go with the middle one. So I'll score two VP for that. Yeah. Taking me to three. But they now have to take a panic test. At minus four. At minus four, yeah. Two dice. So that's Rod's ten. Hit. Uh, starting on six, so yeah, looking at ten. So I could lose a lot of guys here. Six, going to lose four, four guys. That's fair enough. I'm accepting the damage on Rob's unit. For the victory points. Yes. Because they don't run away from that. No. So they are there. You have to kill me to get me off there. Yes. This is the bad one for you. Ah. So I'll score for it, getting the point. Yep. And here's where it gets messy. So when you score points from this objective, one friendly unit may make a free maneuver yep. slash retreat action. The cavalrymen are going to make a maneuver action. Ah. So what they're going to do is rotate. I lose an inch going over this, yeah? Yep. So if you want to move them just five inches dead forward, And then we'll rotate them so that we're looking at this. Yeah, going in for the flank. After, unless you get a maneuver off, and then it'll be the rear. Exactly. And they get a free maneuver yeah. to start with yes. to get them further around. Um, so that's your one. That's my three. Yeah. I get my hand size increases by one. One, and I get to draw an extra card. I get one victory point for that. Yep. So I'll put that over here. And then your other one. This one is I can force an opponent's unit to take a panic test. Yep. Robs. Robs. Yep. I knew this was going to happen. 
So he's gone up to eight, so he loses another three? Uh, no, two. Two, yeah. Which puts him on his last rank, which means if he activates and uses Stark Fury, he yeah. loses nobody. That's true. Um, and that is the end of the round. Now it gets interesting. So first player token comes to me. Are you sure? Gimme, I gimme. mean, gimme, gimme. Technically, I am the queen. I've got the moves <laughs> for it. <laughs> uh, Sorry, <laughs> that was to put you off. Now you don't know what you're going to do. No, I know exactly what I'm going to do. <laughs> uh, I'm going to take it very simply. Uh, Caitlin is going to activate on the tactics board and go for the, the heal three wounds. Okay. Remove a condition. Thankfully, there's no conditions down, but Rob's unit is going to get three guys back. Because they're, they're looking just a smidge shaky. Also, I'm going to use her to influence them with her card. For the best. Yeah, because then they'll get their full attacks if yeah. they get the attack. So, I am going to declare... You're going to try charging in here? Yes, I am. Okay. So, I'm going to have to roll two dice, though. Yeah. And on a one or two, I don't get to re roll my hits. Yeah. So, what do you get? A oh, two. two. Which is unfortunate. Yeah. But I need to cause that single wound to you. Yes. So I'm going to pivot. Yeah. And go into it. It didn't matter what I rolled for distance because of how close we are. Yep. And you're in. And I'm in. Yep. So six tax dice. Yep. Ooh. That's four hits still. Yep. Uh, uh, minus ones. Saving on fours becomes fives. fives. That's fair enough. Oh, oh look at that. But it I will did take one. Which yeah. is what you want it. Yeah. No, 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 I need two. You needed two, yeah. So this guy will take an additional wound. And I will take a panic test. At minus one. Uh, I'm then yeah. going to play... I am going to play Hear Me Roar, which okay. gives you an additional minus one to the test. Okay. Uh, I am going to play Lash Out, yeah. which will probably take priority of that happening first, I think. Yeah. Uh, it's when you take a panic test, whereas that is... Uh, actually... It's when I take a panic test, when I am attacked. Yeah, so, so the lash out happens yeah. first. Yeah, lash out happens first, which is important, because otherwise I would have the extra rank destroyed. But that doesn't matter. Yeah, because it's just D3. Oh, actually, if this unit has one destroyed rank, so I don't have a destroyed rank yet, so I can't play that. Ah! So you have it... to have a destroyed rank to lash out. Oh, whereas when I took out the yeah. two earlier, then that's how it happened. Yeah. Right, that's fine. So, so panic test. minus one, minus two. Minus two. So I'm on it. Oh, dead. double ones. Oh, that was so, totally worth it for Jamie. So that's six wounds. So. Oh, no, you're dead. You rolled a double one. Minus one for the corpse pile, you just reminded me. Minus one for my card. I, I, minus I already one. did the minus two. It's minus three, I charge you in the flank. No, it's minus two. Charge in the flank, corpse pile minus two. Card minus three. Oh, yeah, I am dead. Sorry, I, you mentioned the corpse pile. I'd forgotten the corpse pile. That's fair enough. So the, the cavalry are dead. They almost made it round. That's fair enough. And I get to do a surge fourth? Uh, yes, surge fourth. Is a free manoeuvre. So they get to Where did make the a regular manoeuvre, yeah. Uh, that is the objective that's under them. Yeah. So I'm going to pivot Yeah. to that. Yeah, so I assume you're moving forward, moving... Well, pivoting... Just pivoting there. Okay, that's We're, fine. But they have activated this turn. I will yep. move the activation. That's fine. Right, on to me then. So I'm going to play a card here. Yep. Uh, winter is coming. Yes. Uh, so whenever uh, a friendly unit declares a charge, the Berserkers are going to charge the Mountain's Men. Yep. Your opponent may not play tactics cards or use orders for the remainder of this turn. That is horrible, because I was so about to play some play... tactics cards. Yep, for the remainder can... of the turn? Yeah. Remainder of this turn. Wow. See, that's interesting, because I would have uh, worded that that it was this activation, because otherwise that seems really powerful. Check how long a... Because they call it round, check how long a turn is, because each activation yeah, may be a turn. Yeah, this be my turn. Yes. Then it goes to your turn. Yeah, because I... There's a little bit of a wording thing there. <laughs> that, that, yeah. that made me cry a little bit inside. Yeah. Also, if you control the cross swords, the enemy they successfully charged also becomes panicked. I don't yeah. have that, but that's okay. So oh. the Mountain's Men, rolling to make sure they don't have a disordered charge. Yep. Uh, what? Oh my god, they do. So no, no re-rolls, yeah. but they've got more than enough to get in. So they will go into you and square up. And the best bit is, they're still touching that. Yep. I was hoping that would happen. Right. Attacks then. Yeah. So for the Berserkers on the, the charge, it's eight attacks. Base. 
Yes. Looking at threes. Please. With no rerolls. Oh, that's not bad. That'll be six hits. Okay. Now, last time I lost more to the uh, yeah. corpse pile, effectively. So they, oh, they just lost four. They have saves of four. Yeah. So that's four gone. Yeah. Panic test. Yeah. Uh, minus one for your minus corpse one. pile. Eight. Nine. Nine. You're okay. They're okay. Well, that's a relief for you. It is. <laughs> um... And they've activated it. They've activated. Yeah, so what I've activated is Caitlin and them this round, yeah? Yeah. Okay, just no, so I've I, I remember. I've activated Jamie. Yeah. I think I have to do the Mountains Men next. Otherwise, yeah, Grey Wind's going to snap at them. Yeah. Uh, and it's, it's more if Grey Wind snaps at them, mm -hmm. it's only saving on fives. On yeah. top of that, there's the corpse pile. Yeah, which might delete them. Yeah. Uh, it's only when you flank. Is it when you, whenever you flank, or whenever you charge me in the flank? Uh, it's just whenever you're attacking in the flank. That's. I thought it would be that. Yeah, that kind um, of makes sense. That. Yeah, it does. I'd like they wrote it that way. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, in which case, so I'm gonna use the mountains men. They're now gonna strike out at um, the berserkers. I did something wrong with the Mountain's Men earlier. Really? People might point this out. He had to charge your Berserkers in the last turn because yes. of his rule. It's all right. Friendly game. Well, it ended badly for me because if I made to charge... Well, you would have been closer. Yeah, that's true. And maybe the cavalry thing wouldn't have happened. Yeah. So, yeah. It's a swings and roundabouts, but that is definitely something we got wrong. Yeah. That's I got enough. wrong. <laughs> uh, so, I'm going to attack with the Mountain's Men. So, yeah, it's just getting familiar with your forces. It is. And things like... Um, because now you've read out the, the charge rules, mm. technically he has to charge anybody within 11 inches. Yeah. Because that's the ma it says maximum distance you can yeah. go. Um, so his unit is maybe one you maybe want to hold back a little bit if he's in it? Yeah, it might be why you put him in the swords rather than those, because they move faster than the mountains men. Yeah. So yeah, it actually would mean that he yeah, would only be able to charge within 10 inches. Bit. Yeah. Um, oh, wait, no, no, no. He's the mountain, not the hind. <laughs> yeah. Different brother. Yeah. Although I do wonder what the Hound will do whenever he eventually turns up and who he'll fight for. Yeah. Well, he's a Lannister model at the moment, mm -hmm. but they might bring out a mercenary one later. Well, or as, as you work through the storyline, yeah. he does sort of change allegiances quite a bit. Yeah. Um, but it's on the books, so he will be a mercenary, I imagine, but never a... He's not quite there in the never TV sword, series, sword, yeah. but never a Stark kind of yeah. dark uh, brother of the Night's Watch. Yeah. Because they haven't got that far in the books yet. Yeah, although, ah, no, there's the faction I really want to see turn up at some point. Yeah, the, I want to play the Night's the, Watch. Yes. I want them to do it. I don't know if they'll do it, but and I want them to do it. How good would Jon Snow be? <laughs> <laughs> you know nothing, Jon Snow. <laughs> That's how the mountain feels at the moment. <laughs> uh, right, none of these are actually going to affect this, but it's more what it would affect on the rest of my turn. So yeah. I'm not going to do any of the others. The mountain is going to attack. Yeah. He is going to attack Grey Wind. Okay. He gets four attack dice. Now, just to let you know, the puppy does have a three up save and its morale is a two up with two wounds. So he, with the mountain, he's got sundering. Mm -hmm. So minus one to your armor. He's got critical blow. Oh crap, also, I forgot a thing. Yeah. Uh, because I attacked you, you've become vulnerable. Oh, okay. That is important. Yeah, that, that will actually be very important. Um, so yeah, I definitely want to attack the puppy. Yeah, okay, hit the puppy. Um, Don't kick the puppy. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm gonna roll four dice, hitting on threes. Uh -huh. Sixes generate two hits. Okay. So no sixes. Three hits. Three hits. Three up saves. All at minus one. Why at minus one? Because he's got sundering. Okay, so four up saves. Yep. Come on, you can stay, puppy. Dead no! puppy. <laughs> the puppy. No, not my puppy. Okay, the puppy's dead. That's unfortunate. I think it's time for Jon Snow's unit to activate an attack. Rob Stark. <laughs> You're now excited about the idea of Jon Snow. Yeah. <laughs> Different brother again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so they will attack with their full attack stats yep. because Caitlyn's influencing them. So they'll get to attack you with eight dice. Yes. Are you using the D3 damage? Of course. I thought you might. So hitting on threes. I six is double. two right now because Cersei's still there. Uh, the Cersei hasn't gone yet. Oof. And if she clears you off and they haven't activated, nah, I'll I just think wonder. I think they're going to be wiped this turn, so I'm going to yeah. use it. Going to go for it. 
So six is generate two hits. Yep. There's a six. Yeah. Oh. That was a four anyway. So, yeah, so, so hit on three. Th three misses. But we'll leave one in because I've got a roll to save for it anyway. Yeah, there you go. And then uh, what I will do is I'm going to play... Um, I should have played that card. That doesn't matter because it would have affected the dice roll, so I'm mm -hmm. not going to do it. Um, wealth of the Rock, they get plus one armor, so they're saving on twos. Uh, yeah. So six. Make sure John's not doing anything extra. I think his is more no. movement and yeah, his is more movement and just getting into and free the puppy. Related. Free puppy, yeah, that free puppy is really useful. Well, did more damage to the unit than the berserkers, I think, did. Ah, <laughs> uh, what? So it's three failed. Yep. Ah, uh, four failed. No, nope. uh, plus yeah. one. Wrong that'll, side. That'll be a morale. That it will be a morale. Yes. Now, I get to roll the morale, but I do have an order, uh -huh. which is if I fail the morale, I yeah. can choose to only lose one model. Oh, that's handy. Yeah, it would be good for the mountain. <laughs> Seven, I am not within distance of anything bad, Yeah. so that's a pass. Okay. Which means you have to take a morale test at minus two, because I'm... Two. Because Lannister Supremacy, if I pass a morale test, yeah. you have to... Okay. So uh, that's only these two units here. On an eight for me. Yeah. Okay. Oh, a 10 five. will do it. No, no, no. Out of the thing. Oh. That won't, so two people go. That's unfortunate. You're too honest for your own good, Justin. No, no, no. <laughs> I, I always good. play it. If you roll outside of your dice tray, it doesn't count. Adam says, if you can't hit, like this is when we're playing at home, if you can't hit the table, you can't hit your opponent. <laughs> <laughs> um, right. Yeah, so that's Rob's unit gone. Yeah. I am now going to use Cersei. Yeah. Uh, not that one. I'm going to use this one. Okay, for so the mountain is going to attack. Okay, and she's going to put that on those guys. Oh, on those guys! Oh, interesting. So okay. the mountain attacks. Yeah, with four attack dice. Yeah, with sundering. With sundering and crit, uh, like yep. all of their special abilities. Yep, yep. So that is five hits. Uh huh. Minus one armor. Yep. So for the berserkers, that means they're on sixes. Yep. This is going to hurt. So that's five, five gone. Dead. Yep. You now need to take a panic test at minus four because they're vicious. Whoa, whoa, whoa. hang on, hang on. Hang on. Where are <laughs> yeah. you getting minus four from? Oh, yeah, corpse pile. <laughs> no, uh, corpse pile is minus five. Okay, minus do, two. Do the numbers. Yeah, don't worry, I will. Um, vicious. Defenders suffer minus two to panic tests. Right. Cersei, Cersei on there. minus two to minus panic tests. Minus five. Right, so the berserkers who are normally on a four are now on a nine. Yeah. Okay. Ah, now, actually, before we do that, yep. I have a priority thing. Lash out. Yeah. Because it's when a friendly unit is D3. attacked Ooh. with melee. And it's actually flat three plus one. So four guys die. So they're all dead. Yeah. But that causes a slight problem. All right. I'm now going to... A Lannister pays his debts. Well, hang on. Wait, wait, wait. In sequence. So I've taken wounds. I've been destroyed. Yeah. I get to play a card because I'm destroyed. Right. Which actually means you're not taking a panic test yet. Yep. So I haven't actually played Hear Me Raw. Yep. I then put on you, panicked and vulnerable. Then I'm playing Hear Me... Hear Me Raw, yeah. No, no, I played Hear Me Raw already. Yeah. Oh, well, so... Th uh... yeah, that's yeah. it, I didn't play anything. Cersei's effect caused the attack, that's why you're at minus... Their yep. combat so was vicious. Five, so my... I'm on nine, and you can make me re-roll. Yes. Okay. Huh. So I will make you re-roll that, because that is an eight. Uh, for a six. So that's three more gone. Yeah. It's two ranks gone. Hooray! They're hey. fighting at full power. Poor. This has been a, a bloody battle so far. Yeah, th this round has kind of made it a little bit bloody. Now, we have to clear up and actually get ourselves sorted. No, I've still got two activations. You've oh, still yes, got one. So I've still got one, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, uh, do your thing then. Uh... No, no, I just activated Cersei. Oh yeah, so it's on me. Yeah. Uh, do I charge with them? What does the forest do? Now. Okay, so forest, they are cover and rough. Oh, so it's only rough? So it's only rough. So all that does is, is minus subtract one, one. And cover is the train priest lies between the target of a ranged attack and the attacker. You gain plus one to cover. Yeah. That's fine. So they will charge the 
Oh, the halvadiers. If I charge them in the front, I'm going to take that hit. They're going to activate, and they're just going to shout harsh language at you and do nothing. Because <laughs> I think it's more valuable to hold that point. And maybe have you come after me. I'm going to do something mean then. Okay. I'm going to activate these guys here. Uh-huh. They're going to charge his unit. Uh... Oh, that's a weird one. Because I can see you. Yeah. I am definitely behind your flank. Yeah, you would. And I can do it. a free pivot before I charge. Ah, but you don't really have space to pivot. You would c connect with my base or your own base. So you can make pivots and stuff, but you uh... can't connect and land on another base. So how would that work? Because I'm like all of the criteria is actually there. I can charge. I'm unsure. I am unsure. But I mean, like, even if you pivot a little, so if I may. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. So I'm going to declare the like charge. That, you would then come forward and hit me and then butt up onto my side. Yeah. Uh, I that. need to roll the dice anyway. Yep. Because if I get a one, I don't get yep. to re-roll hit dice. So you're like that. That wasn't in the Out box. The For a one. For a one. You don't get to re-roll. I get seven attack dice. Yep. Six, seven. I'm hitting on fours. Mm -hmm. Yep. Fours. Oh. Ooh. They are all sundering. Halberds have sundering, so it's oh. minus one for the halberds. Yeah. Minus, minus one, one for, for the, the flank. flank. So my save is now on a six. Yep. Rob's unit's dead. Gotcha. Now this is the nasty thing I was going to do, apart from killing Rob's unit. Yep. They're going to do their free manoeuvre to turn back round. And face it, yeah. These are going to do their free pivot. Uh, yeah. Because they were engaged. And you claim the two. Not after the two. They're going to declare a charge because they haven't activated yet. Ah. You've got no activations left. Yep. And they come into me. They're going to come into the flank. Very clever, Chian. I noticed it when you said you weren't going to charge me. I was like, right. Yeah. Well played. No, very <laughs> well played. Uh, so, two. two. You're fine. You're in. I'm in. I only get six attack dice. Yep. Hitting on fours. Uh huh. No other special rules. Yep. I reroll misses, so that's two hits so far. Uh huh. Five hits. Okay. Uh, Minus one armor. On sixes. sixes. So I need to see if two of these are the yeah. units gone. Oh. Uh, do you want to reroll that one? Uh, it doesn't matter because the unit's dead. Yeah. So the Great John falls. And then these guys are going to use their free maneuver mm -hmm. to put them on this one. Okay, so you don't have to take the panic test. Yeah. Now at this point... Oh no, actually they're going to stay on the panic test one. Sorry. Okay, for two? For two. Yeah. Because I've remembered I've got him with his order still, which will allow him to only lose one man if I fail it. Uh, yeah. That's, that's actually stupidly good for that particular one. That's why they were in my centre. Yeah. It's just the speed slowed them down. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll say this. You see here now, I have one unit left. You have a full unit, a near full unit, and a near full unit. I'm going to give you the win. That's I... okay. It's my activation first as well next round. Exactly. Um, that was actually a really clever finishing blow. Uh, it... It was the cavalry being destroyed and Grey Wind being destroyed that allowed it to happen, I think. Yeah, you, you stole activations from me. Yes. Which was very cleverly done. I mean, like, I was hoping, for me, I was hoping my units could just hold out long enough to get to the end of this turn, because then I could have claimed four again. And you'd have won. Exactly. That'd have been it, it's over. Exactly. So, very interesting play. I mean, like, seeing the, the extra movement there, I mean, like, the cavalry, I almost got them around the back. Almost. It was the double one on the morale. Yeah. If it hadn't been for the double one on the morale, yeah. you could have fallen back that way, free manoeuvred. And then been into the you would have gone back in, of I, I imagined you were going in the back of the mountains, men. Uh, actually, I was looking at that central unit. Because ah, that was what was scaring me. Because I had Greywind there. Yeah. And Greywind, because he's a gimme, I wasn't really worried about losing him. Yes. But it also might have made that other unit of uh, your guys turn around and start they'd working your way along had the to back. Chase you. Yeah. So that, that's what I was aiming for there. It just didn't come off the way I wanted. But. Very interesting battle. I really enjoyed that, Cad. Thank you so yeah, much. Well, I am sure we got stuff wrong, everybody. Make sure and drop it below so that we next time me and Cad get to play, we can get it right. And this is when we played the other day. I yeah. said, if you told me that we were going to play uh, using Warhammer 40k as an example, a thousand yeah. point game of Warhammer 40k, yeah. and it would be this tactical, yeah. I'd have said, it's probably you're not yeah. saying the right words there. <laughs> um, 
this game, I think, it, it's, it's great. I can't, I can't wait for the extra units. Yeah, my my favorite part of this is actually that tactics board, just that little extra. Because I mean, before we start it, yeah, I said to you, do you want to just add the extra one in each? You know, because we yes. just up the points, and you were just like, no, no, that that kind of scares me. You having two chances on that that tactics board to do stuff. Oh, it's also things like if it wasn't for the tactics board. Yeah, this center wouldn't have happened. Yeah, if it wasn't for the tactics board, yeah, my cavalry it, wouldn't have been moving as quick. Yeah, it's there's... something that so many people forget is that extra movement you can nab out of there or from your cards. And it explains their points cost because, for instance, when we were looking at the extra characters, Sansa yeah. costs three points, and you're like, well, her ability I don't feel, think is worth three yeah. points. Well, I don't know but you got to remember, really useful hunting out a card you want. It ca well, imagine if you had the um, more of the ones that instantly cause damage. Yeah, well, I mean, like, if I quickly flick through here just for some of them, if I wanted, say, Northern Ferocity, right? Yeah. Uh, this attack gains Sundering. Uh, if this unit has only one remaining rank, it also gains Vicious. Ooh. And if I control the swords, it also puts Vulnerable on you. Being able to hunt out something like that, or just a very specific card, say I want it a last stand there, because that yeah. would have been really useful on the Mountains, man. Because then I could have went, okay, that unit's destroyed, they're going to get a last attack at you. Yes, and with the and it's off their best profile, isn't it? So that would be ten attacks. Yeah, and if they like, if you have more points, you can put in like the is it the Umber Champion that means yeah. that their their attacks get better. Uh, not yeah, just they, the extra they get special unit rules. Attachments are are yeah they add extra rules sometimes orders and stuff. Yeah, but like the Lannister one we were talking about, which kind of eats that points. Yeah. Uh, and so do the non-combat units, but the see, I see them as an absolute must for any list. I've got a feeling that because I do play in some tournaments. If I was playing a tournament of this and it was say fifty, sixty points, two. I'd have two of them definitely. Yeah, every time. I well, mean, if I had the points, I would go three. Yeah, well, you're hoping your opponent only has two, and then you know you've got three slots, and you can yeah. also use one early to like if you're playing Starks, you know, most of their cards are cross swords yeah. and uh, the horse. You can be like, all right, if you, as Lannisters, I'm going to put um, Tyrion. I'm going to put him on the, the horse. Yeah. And you're like, you're stopping the... Then one of Rob's abilities has just disappeared. Yeah, exactly. So you can sort of block your opponent. I mean, like, whenever I went on the coins there, I blocked you from getting an extra bonus on one of your cards. Uh, a lot of my cards were actually coin-related. Yeah, uh, which was actually this one. So uh, Wealth of the Rock. So I mean, you're going to gain plus one state defense save rolls. If you control the coins, uh, they automatically block D3 hits. Uh, the one that made you panicked yeah. if I had played that on you, it, it, uh, if I control coins, uh, I also force you to return, I, I return a mm -hmm. discarded tactic card from my hand. The other interesting thing for them is, you see because they're cheaper than like a big unit, Yeah, you can out activate your opponent. Yes. That's the advantage the Starks have at the beginning of this. They've got extra activations on you. And I think, like you said, that might have been what swung it for me in the end. I was yeah. killing units that hadn't activated yet. Exactly, and then you were just bringing that activation game to me, which was yes. really good. All right, well, everybody, hope Sorry, you got excited. <laughs> no, no, it's, it's good to talk like that. I love having someone who I can tactically talk to about yeah. games like this because it's so fun. Everybody, get your comments in below. Tell us what you thought of the game. Is there anything I should have done differently, perhaps having charged whenever I didn't? <laughs> uh, we will move on. We will see you again very soon. We hope you enjoyed this Let's Play. Go ahead and check out our other content on screen now, and be sure to check out beastofwar.com for the latest gaming news and gaming Let's Plays. And while you're at it, why not hit subscribe and remember to ding our dong. Go on, you know you want to click it. Go on.